Hey, everybody, this is Doug Aldrich with the Dead Daisies, and you're watching the Rods TV show on YouTube. And we thank you, and we love you guys. Can't wait to see you. Fala aí galera, beleza? Rodrigo aqui, sejam todos muito bem-vindos ao Rods Online. Se você não conhecia o canal, vou pedir para você se inscrever. Para você que já é da casa, muito obrigado por mais uma visita. E hoje nós temos o prazer e a honra de receber aqui o grande guitarrista Doug Aldridge, que vai bater esse papo com a gente. E eu estou aqui com o meu amigo Rodrigo Schelza. Doug, first of all, thank you very much for being here with to this interview at Rods Online. And... Do you have a, a message for your Brazilian fans? Yeah, I miss you guys. I miss you so much. I, I can't wait to come back to Brazil. Um, some of the, I mean, it's the best fans in the world. And we love you guys. Can't wait to come back. Doug, um, we would like to start this interview back to when you replaced Richard Fortes in 2016, 16, right? And yeah, then you recorded yeah. the Make Some Noise album. And how this invitation to the, the Dead Days is, came up? Um, it, it, it was, you know, we're, we're all friends. I've, friend, I've worked with uh, Marco Mendoza and Brian Tishy at different times in Whitesnake. And um, so I got a call from, from Marco saying that, um, you know, that, that Guns N' Roses is getting back together. Richard and Dizzy were going to go and they wanted to know if I'd be interested in talking so we did and we talked about making a new brand you know starting properly with a brand new album and uh so january 24th i believe it was um i started with the dead Daisies writing the make some noise record and uh oh sorry i'm trying to <laughs> sorry. i have let me It's it's uh sorry about that. I'm I was I've got I've got cameras all over the house, but my doorbell is, for some reason is is not working good. Let me get this out of here. Hang on. That girl, she's got a mind of her own. <laughs> Alexa. Uh, I don't know what her name is, but she's she. I, I, I really want to say mean things to her because she's making my life difficult. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um, continue. Uh, we're going to fast forward to uh, 2019. Yeah. Uh, and we were took by surprise with the announcement of Glenn Hughes replacing John Corabi and Mark Mendoza. Uh, yeah. You two Glenn before as part of his solo band in, in 2019, which we had the chance to see you uh, with 2015, him. Here. 2015. 2015. Yeah, 2015. 2015. Yeah, 15, yeah. Uh, yeah. And, but, it, but it took a few years for us to see a music collaboration between the two of you, between you and Glenn. How yeah. did you go and react to the news that he joined the Dead Daisies? I was really extremely excited about it because you know glenn's glenn's been a friend for years and and he's like a big brother to me really um i've had a couple of there, there's been other situations like that i've we're working with coverdale he was like a big brother but glenn really is like somebody i can call all the time and he's just he's there you know and um so management called me and said we're speaking with glenn about you know coming in and and taking over from Marco. Marco was, was doing more solo stuff, I think. And John really wanted to just relax, you know, basically. He, he had, John had been working a lot since 2014, I guess, or 15, whenever he joined, I guess, 14. Uh, they made Revolution record, which was a great album. And um, John did great on it, man. I mean, he, he did an amazing version of Midnight Moses. Um, And then, you know, and Marco is, Marco loves to tour. He's always on the road. So they said, well, Glenn's going to come in and, and, you know, play bass and sing. And what, what do you think? And I was like, that sounds amazing. That's like, you know, 
when you make a change in a band, you really, it's, it's, it's good for everybody to make a fresh start, not to try and, you know, replace John with another John Jr. or something. You know what I mean? So yeah. getting Glenn, Glenn Hughes, the voice of rock, my brother, I was ecstatic. I was great. I was really excited. And I said, um, is this real? And I, so they said, we'll call Glenn. And I, so I called Glenn. I said, Glenn, is this real? And Glenn goes, it's time for you and I to make some music together. And I was like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so that's, uh, that's what, uh, how I felt. And then, you know, he came in, we, we immediately, you know, David Lowy and I had been writing some, some music together, but we didn't really have an exact direction. You know what I mean? Because we didn't know who was going to be singing. But then once, once we found out it was Glenn, then we, you know, focused right in and got some risks for Glenn. Glenn said, Hey man, I got, I've got a, you know, Glenn's, He's a complete songwriter. Glenn writes like he could write ten songs a day. Literally, he could write ten songs a day. Wow! And me and me and David write like one a day. <laughs> <laughs> so like you know, we had some songs for him. He had some songs for us. We got together, and the first song we 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 just kind of vibed on was "Righteous Days" in uh, 2019 in the summer in August, I guess it was, and that was the start. It was like this sounds really good together. And Glenn brought in uh, what turned out to be the title track, Holy Ground. And we, you know, we, we all had an opportunity to put our stamp on that song. So it just was, it, it was great. It was a great mix, a great fresh start. And I love Glenn and he's such a badass. I mean, he's like the whole package. The guy looks amazing. He sings amazing. He plays amazing. You know, what, what more could you ask for? Talking yeah. about Holy Ground, it's a, an amazing album, by the way. Thanks, guys. Thank you. It's amazing. Awesome. We had a we had a blast making it. You know, I'm glad you guys. We don't we don't know what we're doing exactly. You know, we know what we like, and we we try to we try to you know follow that road and and do what we like and we do what we think is appropriate for like for example, you know. Glenn would bring in songs and it would be like, okay, well, Glenn hears it like this. Me and David would hear it, would, would want to maybe make a little adjustment to it. Glenn would be like, cool. And, and we, we, little by little, we, we made the album. But the thing about the album, about the Holy Ground album is it really has a vibe. Like we were in the vibe in the moment. And it, it all happened before COVID, the, the pandemic. If if the pandemic had hit, we wouldn't have been we wouldn't have been right there. We were like right there together. We would because me personally, I was totally freaked out when the COVID when COVID hit. I was like, oh man, like can I even go outside? You know. But uh, yeah, it's thank you guys. I'm glad you enjoy it. That's why we we're we're, we're super happy that that people are giving us you know nice nice reviews and everything. And you know, we'll always try and do better in the future. But it's a good record, I think. It's an amazing record. Great it is. songs. It is. Indeed. Indeed. You recorded in, in in France, right? Yeah, south of France, uh, outside of Marseille. No distractions. We were living together um, above the studio. There was, um, you know, all kinds of an old um, chateau. You know. French chateau, like a big mansion. And um, part of it was kind of closed off because it was haunted and it didn't have any, it didn't have, like it wasn't heated or whatever. But the studio and the, the other rooms above the studio were there. And we just hung out together and, you know, ate breakfast, lunch, and dinner together. And we'd wake up in the morning, you know, our pajamas go straight to work. It was good. That's great. That's great. Um, keep, um, Holy Ground, the album Holy Ground, in in my uh, perspective, I think it's a very heavy and 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 groovy album, comparing to the ones before. Yeah. Uh, 
very moody in some of these songs. Uh, and and uh, especially when you compare to 2018's Burn It Down, you know. Um, when, yeah. as, as you said, you had the addition of the band, in the band of such an iconic figure like Glenn. And yeah. how this influence the songwriting process? And, and keeping the same subject, how was your interaction with him song-wise uh, from, from the beginning? Well, it's a good point because, you know, um, as I mentioned, you know, when Glenn came in, it gave us, it gave us focus. Because I, and I know Glenn because I'd worked with him and been friends with him. I know what he liked. So immediately I started to think about guitar riffs and things that, that Glenn might like. And... Um, So, so stuff like bustle and slow and like no other, um, those, those types of things were written initially. Just the riff was basically like, you know, bustle and flow. I thought, wow, Glenn could, Glenn might like that, you know? So I just, I always present the ideas to the singer, to John, to Glenn, to David Coverdale, to whoever I'm working with. I present it. I don't, I don't get too precious about it because I can, I can write a lot of different riffs or whatever. But when I find something, I think, this is good. I'm going to present this one. One out of 10. If I come up with 10 riffs, 10, 10 guitar riffs, I pres there's one that I'll go, I think Glenn might like that. And so David and I were working together and we, we, we kind of got uh, that come alive and some other stuff. And with Glenn in mind, you know, so it, it influenced our, it influenced our direction because I, I told him Glenn likes heavy grooves. That's what Glenn likes. And of course you have to leave it to the singer because if the singer goes, I'm not feeling it, you know, like, uh, uh, it, it's not me, you know, he can't sing it. He's not going to sing it. So you got to work with the singer. That's really important. The singer is the guy with the big balls, you know, <laughs> They got to sing that shit and, and deliver it. So um, I, I just try to focus on stuff. So it, it affected me. And then working together with Glenn um, was great because Glenn's a very open guy. You know, he, 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 you can, he'll give you the opportunity to go, Glenn, look, this is what I'm thinking. This is what I was picturing for you, for you. I'm picturing like, for example, like no other. I said, I'm picturing comes in it's a bass intro then there's a guitar part for a second and then it stops and it's just guitars it's me doing one thing and david doing another thing on the other side and then you're out but you're singing so you're like owning the you know owning everything and then um then when the chorus kicks in it's it's like there it is the bass and then you know the song was so simple i thought well let's let's make a bass solo you know but Even on songs that Glenn brought, like My Fate or, um, or uh, Unspoken, I said, Glenn, I hear it like this. Like, I want to do it like this. And he goes, sometimes he would go, yeah, I like that. That's cool. Good idea. Or sometimes he would say, man, it, yeah, I really want, the, I want it to keep driving. I want it to be like this. You know, let's, let's, let's go back to what you were doing before and the, off the original. So it was a very dynamic but also very uh respectful partnership with him awesome Doug, during this pandemic time you were very active in the social medias and you are now doing something that we are enjoying a lot which is live from Daisland at the monster of rock radio which you pay homage to some of your influences and revisit some, revisit some of your songs with previous bands How this idea came up and what can we expect for the next episodes? Okay, well, first of all, I am not a radio guy. I, I, am, I love to play guitar and speak with my guitar. I don't love my voice. It doesn't, to me, it doesn't sound good. And I also stutter a lot. Like, I, I, you know, I'll be honest with you guys. But like, like that. But like, uh, 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 you know. That's not good for radio. So when the guys ask me, hey, we want to do this thing live from Days Land, we want you to, to do the, the first couple episodes and then we'll bring in 
uh, Tommy and David and finally Glenn, who's coming soon. Um, I was like, I don't think I'm the right guy for this, you know. I'm, but they said, well, just try it, you know. So I, I tried it and I listened to it and I was like, oh, it's horrible, it's fucking horrible. So I decided, okay, I'm going to make some cheat sheet notes. Like I'm going to decide what I'm talking about exactly, and I'll be able to elaborate on that. And and that helped me. And um, so far it's been, you know, it's been fun. I mean, the music is great. The music that they program, we have a program director that um, uh, Harlan Hendrickson from Monsters of Rock, he's amazing. And also David Edwards from our management, he's involved in the programming. And then I can just say like, you know, could, can you guys put in some Jeff Beck this week? Or can you guys put in some Black Rose or whatever? And they'll do that. And of course we got dead daisies in there. And, um, but uh, in the future coming up, um, the big show that I want to get done is, is with Glenn, you know, there hasn't been a, a Glenn show yet. So that's, you know, but I have to find the right songs. Harlan and David Edwards need to find the right songs. And then we'll, we'll, uh, we'll go to Glenn and go, all right, let's, let's, this is the big enchilada. Let's make it rock, you know? So that's, that's what's coming up is basically with Glenn on, I talked to Glenn and I said, I, you know, I know I'm not, I'm just a guitar player. I'm not a radio guy or whatever. I'm not a, like you guys, I'm not a VJ or DJ or anything. Look at the music behind Rodrigo. He's got everybody. And, and, and Ross too, same thing. Look at everything. I, I, I don't know. So, but I asked Glenn, I said, listen, I need, I need you for like two hours to do this show. It's, it's going to be the first one with you. And it's going to be the big, the, the best one, you know? So he said, yeah, let's do it Sunday. We're going to record it Sunday. It'll be out like a week later or something like that. That's great. That's great. And, and uh, you guys recently announced a new West tour with nine dates for late June until early July. Right. Yeah. Um, after a long time with, no live shows. Uh, please tell us the expectations for these shows and to finally see, uh, to finally show the uh, to some fans this new lineup in action. And now with the addition of Tommy Clufeters re uh, replacing uh, Dean Castrono. And by the way, Tommy is, man, I, you know, I love Dean. There's no question. Dean's an amazing guy. We, we've done a lot of sessions together, different things. And he's so talented. You don't, I, I personally don't compare, you know, these guys because they're different. Dean is um, a, a more, you know, he, he's more a finesse drummer um, and he's a singer. Tommy Clefettos is, man, he's making us sound re much heavier than we had in the past. And I really dig it. Nothing against Dean or, or Brian Tishy, but Tommy is a badass. Tommy is like, it's like, he's like a heart attack. There's like the real deal. No bullshit. He comes in, he takes his shirt off. <laughs> he's, really, he's got like these abs and his muscles and his, you know, and he's ready to fucking throw down. And he does, and he does his homework. He practices every day. Like literally every day he practices and I, I respect him immensely. I've only, I've only known him for, you know, like five or six months. I'm not sure when he joined the band. That was when I first met him proper, but man, I love playing with him. He's, he's bringing it. And so he's going to be a definite feature him and Glenn together because Glenn is definitely a very heavy bass player. As you mentioned, the sound of the album is heavy. It's, Partly because of the songs, partly because of the production, the way Ben Gross did it, and also partly because the way Glenn did it. You know, Glenn, the way Glenn plays is, is heavy. His riffs are heavy, or the way he plays is heavy. But uh, him and Tommy is, that's all you need. Now, me and David can just be on the, on the top of it and kick ass from the guitar point, you know, but... Uh, I think people can expect a 
a very honest start for these first nine shows. We're not going to try and go crazy with a bunch of, you know, pyrotechnics or frills or anything like that. We're going to basically keep it real. It's, it's ground level. We're going to kick ass from the heart. But um, through those nine dates, we'll get our feet wet. We'll, we'll, we'll be able to get out and make, start the process of getting back. And I'm so excited. I can't wait. I haven't played a show since, you know, since 2000, yeah, December of 2018. So we're going to get out there and get our feet wet. The band is super tight. Make no mistake, we are ready. Whether or not we can still move is good, you know, I don't know. <laughs> but but we're, we're going to play good, you know, and uh, Glenn's sounding, you know, Glenn's singing is, 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 is uncomparable. And then uh, we've got a little time, we've got a month off. We've, we've got some things to do together, but uh, not on the road. And then we're going to come back in September, October and do another U.S. run. But I'm really waiting for those Brazilian and South American dates to come in. That's, that, that, that's the creme de la creme, man, as to say it in French. I mean, um, I don't know how to speak Portuguese only a little bit, like a couple words here and there, but um, like my Portuguese is, is basically like, you know, let me, let me, let me, let me hit that on the back. Like hit that. I'm just joking. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, and 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 about this this the set list, um, you guys are are planning to play most of the songs for for the Holy the Holy Ground album, or and and of course a couple of picks from the old ones, or you're gonna just forget about everything. I mean, no, no, everything, everything, Rodrigo. We're gonna we're gonna of course, uh, you know, we're gonna have those various songs. We've got. A lot of songs now because it, even you know prior to me there were three albums now since me there's three albums so there's a lot of material we're going to cover the the hot spots you know we're going to we're going to definitely hit stuff from uh make some noise long way to go stuff like that um we've got a bunch of stuff from the burn it down album resurrected rise up um we're not i don't um uh, I don't know if we're going to do them all every show. We might like mix it up, but uh, of course the new album is the big feature with Glenn. There's probably six or seven songs we're going to feature from that, from that album. And, and it'll change, you know, we'll, we'll mix it up too. Like if, if uh, you know, we'll try them out, you know, if, if something's going over really, really good, obviously we'll keep it. If, if we're not able to deliver something, as good as, as the album, maybe we'll, we'll swap it for something else, you know? Yeah. But no. uh, right can't, now we can't got to... Can't wait. Can't wait to see you guys live. I hope, yeah, you, can, too, I I hope you can come to Brazil maybe next year. Well, you know, we were thinking about coming this year, but it's still a little hot down there. This year, is, uh, this year I think, is not going to happen. Yeah, yeah. yeah because, because uh, well, you, you know that better than, than, than us. And... Um, Uh, the problem is here in Brazil, we are in one situation and then you have other countries in South America who are also in different situations regarding the, the vaccines and stuff like that. Yeah. So I think I think if we if we, you guys coming, it has to be a scenario that all countries are almost in the same position. I uh, think so. So so you can do like a proper a proper tour to make it worth. Yeah, but we we. we... I mean, we really have to get there at some point for this. The, the, you know, we've got songs for another project, you know, together. We started writing last year. Uh, Glenn had a bunch of stuff and we got together and went through things. And we have, I mean, some killer stuff that's ready for a next project. I don't know when we're going to do that, but it'll probably be sometime this year. And, um, But I would really love, I, I really want to focus on this Holy Ground album for Brazil. Because I remember, you know, Glenn and I talking and we were both reminiscing like, yeah, the last time we were together was in Brazil in 2015. Um, you know, it's, it's a beautiful country, beautiful people, the heart of 
rock and roll is alive in Brazil, just like in 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 Germany, in England, Brazil, Chile, you know, Mexico. There's it, it, the heart of rock and roll is alive. You know, it doesn't matter about a fucking coronavirus. You know, people are still still rocking. But we'll yeah. get there as soon as we can. We're hungry. Yeah, we'll get we, we, we're hungry we for, for live shows. And, and, and just to uh, remind all the, uh, the people who are watching this video that are from Brazil, uh, the, the Holy Ground the that they uh, was released here uh, in, in Brazil uh, through uh, Shinigami Records and Sound City Records. So if you don't have it, buy it and bring it to Doug and the rest of the guys when they're coming to South America to sign it. It's great. It's yeah. a great album. It's a great album. We feel like rock and roll, groovy rock and roll, heavy metal. It's heavy. So buy it. And, and uh, you know, we, we, it's got the two opposite sides. We've got the original founding member, David Lowy, who is just, he's like a fierce, honest guitar player he's no, no bullshit he's not a you know soloing all the time right he's just a he just plays like this you know and then you got so you got that and you got glenn hughes on this side who is the voice of rock and just like the you know he's like a fine wine so we hope you enjoy the album and we will definitely sign them when we see you guys we'll see you for sure if not this year probably next year um every everybody will get back to normal uh looks like um i don't know about other countries where they're sending you know where 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 the vaccines are coming from but it looks like the u.s has come up with a plan to to send some vaccines 500 million to various places and i'm like thinking send them to brazil <laughs> <laughs> i saw that yeah. in 2015 Ah, oh, that's awesome, man. I love it. It was awesome. Um, But we are, Doug, we, we, are huge, we are huge KISS fans here. And of course. we know you auditioned for KISS in 82, right? 82 to replace Ace Frehley. That's right. And could that's you right. tell us about that time and the audition itself? It was, it was bizarre. I, you know, I was just a kid. I was 18 years old and um, it, I was playing, I came to Los Angeles and um, was playing in a club called Gazzari. It was Gazzari's on the Strip. It was a famous club in Sunset Strip for Los Angeles. And uh, a, a girl came to me and said, you know, my boyfriend is the drummer of Kiss and they're looking for a guitar player and I think you would be really perfect. And I, I was like, Ah, this is some joke, you know. <laughs> Then a couple weeks later, we were playing there again. And she came and she brought Eric Carr. And uh, Eric was super nice to me. He said, hey, I really like you playing and I think you should audition. And So I, I was like, wow. You know, and I was, first I was looking at him I'm like, is that really him? But it, 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 you could see his hair. He's got the unmistakable hair. And uh, said, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so I said, yeah, I was, I, that would be cool. You know, Kiss was not my my big band. You know, my big my heart was with Led Zeppelin, but I love Kiss. They had great songs, you know, and I used to listen. My sister ha had a record player. I didn't have one. My sister had a record player and she had Kiss Alive and Kiss Alive 2. And I would listen to those with the headphones and close my eyes and be like, whoa, that's like amazing, you know. The, the vibe of those concerts. And uh, so he called me one day and he said, uh, I, I want you to, he called me, I didn't have a phone. He called me at the store where I was working. I gave him that number and he called me and he said, I want you to come down and meet Gene and Paul. So I, I went down, I met them and Gene said, uh, you know, we hear you you're a good guitar player and I we'll want you to play a little bit on some of our songs that we're working on. They were in the studio at the record plant, a famous studio. Mm -hmm. So I was playing and I'm playing. Uh, there was a song called, um, is, is I Love It Loud on that record? Yeah, Creatures of the Night. 
Yeah, it's a weird riff. When I heard that riff, I was like confused. I didn't know. I, I didn't know what to do. So I was playing and Gene goes, do you ever play major scales? And I said, major scales, what is that? He goes, you know, do, re, mi, fa, so, la, ti, do. And I go, oh yeah, of course I know that. He goes, try that. I go, that's like Michael Schenker, I get it. And so I played it and he's like, yeah, good, good, good. So he goes, okay, good, right? He wrote down three songs. He wrote down um, Firehouse, mm -hmm. Black Diamond, and might've been Strutter, I can't remember. But he wrote the songs down, he wrote his phone number. He goes, call me if you need any help, learn these songs by Monday and let's get together and play. So I got together and played and I, I arrived and it was like first time for me, I was just a kid. I only had a couple of Marshall, I had like a Marshall's half stack. This was eight cabinets and, and eight heads. It was a wall of Marshall's and, I, and they said, you know, okay, there, there, there's your rig. And I'm like, whoa, <laughs> you know, <laughs> that was as good as, as, as meeting, you know, Kiss was, was playing through that many Marshall's. I always dreamed about it. I could never afford that, you know? So we played and they said, sounds good. We'll get back to you. And a couple weeks later, they called me back and they said, uh, want you to come back one more time. And I was like, whoa. So I got, came back, I played. It was a, it's a long story, but basically I wasn't ready. You know, these guys were rock stars. They were, they were, you know, dating famous people and they'd been around the block. And I just, I was not comfortable around them, you know? It doesn't matter about the playing. It's more about the hanging, you know? Mm -hmm. When you're trying to join a band, this is the advice for, for, for younger guys auditioning for people or, or any, any situation where you're trying to, you know, impress people. It's like, just be yourself. Just be, just be natural. Don't worry about all the bullshit, you know? Like, it doesn't matter if you're, I mean, no disrespect, but I would say like, now I'd be like, it doesn't matter if you're Jimmy Page or, or Gene Simmons or, or or whoever. It's like, you're a person, I'm a person, this is what I do, that's it. But at that time, being a kid, and these guys were in their, you know, 30s, we didn't have any connection, like, mm -hmm. personally. So they, they went with Vinnie Vincent. And I get it, because I would have too. Because Vinnie Vincent was a little older, he had more experience. And he could hang out and just be like a normal person. You don't want to have somebody on tour bus that's like awkward. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. It's just like if you're going to hire somebody to do your to help you guys do the, the show or or whatever you're doing in life, even if you're going to you know have somebody help you do a, a a job at your home, if somebody's awkward, it's it's awkward. You don't want to be around that. You know, it's like you want somebody that's confident, that's normal, that's just being themselves. So that's that's what happened but i learned a lot from that experience and it really it really encouraged me because they like my guitar playing you know and and uh they wanted a they wanted a, a high-tech guitar player for you know the 80s type of sound and i was still learning i'm still learning but i was doing pretty good and and uh so it gave me encouragement to get better That's great. That's a great. That's a great story. Great story. Uh, we have two more questions um, regarding your your past, um, and uh, you were part of the recordings of Wasps, the Crimson Idol, and yeah. uh, and, play, and played the songs uh, of Arena of Pleasure. Uh, how this came up, and how was the recording process? Did Blackie consider you to be part of the live lineup? I, I actually don't remember how that came up. I just, after, after around that kiss time, you know, I was, I was a teenager and I soon after moving out of my home, I lost my tele, my telephone got cut off because I couldn't pay the bill. I didn't know anything. I didn't have any money. I was just, I worked in a music store for a little while and, and uh, just, you know, trying to figure it all out being a, a young man. But then by that time, I, I actually had done some gigs. I had done an album with Lion and done a, 
Bad Moon Rising and, and, and Hurricane, and kind of got my name around town as being, you know, a good player, somebody that was professional. And so I just got, I got my phone back <laughs> and I got a call somehow. I don't remember exactly how, but I got a call from Blackie or somebody representing Blackie in a session. You know, he just want to hire me to play two or three songs. And I remember he called me or they called me and they said, come down, bring your guitar. And maybe it was, I knew Frankie Benelli and I, we had jammed together a couple of times and Frankie was a really great guy. And a great, uh, that, that he, great drummer. Yeah. He was, he actually, now I think about it. He might've been the guy that, that put my name in there. Cause they were kind of Chris Holmes left. Chris was a friend of mine. I, I, I met Chris later and really nice guy. Um, but they were trying to finish this album and they called me to come in. So I came in, I played and Blackie was really nice. But then, um, a couple, two or three weeks later, he called me back and he goes, I need you to come back and redo the solo. I've got to, I, I want to change it. And I'm like, I, I'm, I got to, I'm going on tour with, uh, I was going on tour with House of Lords actually at that time. And, um, I said, I can't come back, Frankie. I mean, uh, Blackie. And so he, he basically got Bob Kulik came in and redid a couple mm -hmm. things. I think I ended up only playing on one song, maybe. I'm not sure. But uh, it was, you know, it was interesting. I, I, I like Wasp. I was at the, the very first Los Angeles show of Wasp. I was there as a kid. Really? In the early, early 80s, yeah. It was at the Troubadour. And this was like the first proper show. And I just remember him, Blackie, coming out with a, I'll show you. Wait, hold on. Don't go anywhere. <laughs> I'm going to show you something. Okay. But this is a small one. But you know this thing. This is a small one. It's called Tupperware. And the one Blackie came out with was like about this big big like this and it had meat a bunch a of, meat of meat in it <laughs> so he, it is tupperware he came out with this thing exactly imagine this is bigger and he's got this thing he's like ah! grabbing the meat and chucking it into the audience and it's just like whoa you know you're trying to watch out for the meat <laughs> and then the, the drums went on fire the, the drum ring went on fire it was it was amazing it was a big production show you know so i was there uh, you know, I, I was totally in deep on, on all the rock bands learning and growing up, you know, at that time in Los Angeles was pretty exciting. And, and, and as you mentioned, uh, Lion and, and Bad Moon Rising, there was something that I always wanted to ask you is uh, I'm a huge fan of your contributions with Carl Swan, you know, especially in, you know, in, in Bad Moon Rising. I think it's great. And uh, what ha whatever happened to him? Why, why he why he doesn't sing anymore? Are you still in contact with him? He, he is doing? actually he's actually singing again. He's doing a, a solo project right now for a, a Japanese label or, or a European label. I'm not sure, but he is singing. I just got a call from him uh, last year saying that he wanted to to put out some songs that we had done together. And I was like, sure, of course, you know, no problem. And I said, anything you want me to help you with, I'm happy to do it. And he says, no, I just, I'm just getting my feet wet here. I'm just trying to, um, you know, get back into it. But basically in 1995, we did a tour for our third, our third Badman Rising album, uh, the um, Opium for the Masses. And, uh, We, we, we just did a little tour of, of France and a tour of Japan. We had plans to do more, but Cal was having trouble with his voice. He got sick. He got really sick, you know, got a really bad flu, cold. Um, and he couldn't do it. You know, he was just frustrated. And so when we got home from Japan, he just said, I just want to do some different stuff for a while. And, You know, I'm not interested in doing this hard rock for a while. 
So that's what happened. He, he gave it up and he did some solo stuff, but he, he ended up uh, getting a job as working in the film industry and um, was very successful. So he, he didn't really need, you know, rock and roll like the rest of us. That's all we have, you know. So he was doing that for a long time. But like I said, last year, he called me and said he wanted to do something on his own. He got an offer. Um, so that's what happened. And you will probably hear from him again, you know. Well, that, that's because I'm a huge fan of his voice. I think he's a phenomenal singer. I think he should deserve way, way more recognition. Um, yeah, I, yeah, yeah. Well, you know, we, 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 we made that line album. We felt like that was a good album for the time it was a good young band first album and but our record company was fucked and they they just they just didn't want to put any money into us they they made money from us and they made money from putting out that album but they didn't want to spend any money that was like okay we don't know about these guys if they're going to do good or not so let's just do the bare minimum we'll make our money we've got a profit done move on to the next And unfortunately, that's how it was for Lion. That's why Lion eventually broke up. But and and that's why Batman Rising got together as a fresh start to try it again. But uh, by that time, you know, the music scene started changing. 1991, grunge came out, blah blah blah. But um, you know, Cal Cal was a big influence on me. He was very much he was the one that turned me on to the early White Snake. You know, and he was. A, a great singer, great looking guy, had the whole package. And uh, we he just got, you know, frustrated with the whole scene by the end of the 90, you know, 95, 96. Yeah, I, I got recently the uh, the re-release of uh, um, from Rock Candy from uh, the Dangerous Attraction album. And and the uh, the remaster, this remastered sounds amazing. I was like, I, I haven't heard that album many years that was like wow this is really really good and and, yeah. and actually you mentioned about the, the grunge scene uh i think it was beyond opium for the masses with bad moon rising stuff which is has some influence but it's a really heavy album it's very good i love love this album it's cool it's, it's a really cool album there's good stuff on there but we it was trying to be a mix of the original lion and then fit into the grunge scene. So we were caught in a weird situation. The record company in Japan said, you know, we, we our blood, the al second album, Blood, is a kick-ass record. I really love it. But it, it, it was right at the beginning of grunge and, it, and the record company said, you know, we can do good with this in Japan, but you guys got to make a, a record for the, the world, you know? Mm -hmm. So that's why we did Opium for the Masses. But by that time, it's like it's too late. You know, you can't really change your stripes too much. You got to be yourself. And it was really good, but it's not the real, it's not the real Cal, Swan, or Doug, or, you know, it's our, our heart was in the old stuff, like Thin Lizzy and Deep Purple and stuff like that, you know? Doug, thank you so much again for this great talk. And please leave a message to your fans and to the Dead Days fans here in Brazil and to the subscribers of the channel, please. Well, first of all, I just want to say thanks to you guys because if it wasn't for you guys, I wouldn't be here right now. And we appreciate your support. And you guys are the heart of rock and roll, you know, in, in, in Brazil and all over the world. We're very grateful for all of you guys, what you do to, to keep music alive, it really helps people feel good through these difficult times, you know, that we've gone through and it helps people get through. I, I mean, I, I, I've told friends of mine that do the same thing as you. I've said, thank you, man. I, I was like going out of my mind and I just had to find something to get me, you know, keep my interest. because I was, at, you know, I don't know you guys, but we were locked down hard here. We couldn't go anywhere, you know, And there was no toilet paper, so you couldn't take a shit. <laughs> but but uh, anyway, um, in all seriousness, thank you guys. And to the, the Brazilian fans, we love you. You are the greatest in the world. It's an amazing country. I've only seen 
a few parts of it, but I've seen some amazing parts. Manaus, Porto Alegre, uh, Kibir, uh, Kibirta? How do you say it? Kibirtia. Curitiba, Curitiba, Curitiba. 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 Uh, of course, Sao Paulo and Rio and, and Brasilia. But, uh, man, there's a lot more to it, you know. So I can't wait to come back. And thanks to all our Brazilian fans. We love you guys. And we'll see you as soon as it's possible, for sure. I hope to see you here in Rio de Janeiro playing Holy Ground live. Yes, me too. Me too. With, with Glenn and Tommy and David, it's, it's, it's a kick-ass band. We're so, we've been rehearsing already. We've been practicing, you know, band practice already. And now tomorrow I leave my home one more time for these nine shows. We're, we're going to practice for six days. It's, I lo it's, it sounds amazing. I, I started recording rehearsals and I sent it to the management, you know, to say, Like, here's, here's what we're doing. Here's the songs, how they sound live. And the management called me and said, did you do some, like, special tricks or something to fix it up? And I was like, no, it's just stereo, stereo mix, you know, left and right. And um, it said, sounds really good. And I go, yeah, we've been practicing, <laughs> you know, we're ready. Let's get, let's get out there, you know. What they go? Pode dar o seu... Doug, thank you very much, man. I, I could stay here for uh, three hours asking all kinds of all kinds of stuff from Hurricane, and House of Lords, and and great. And it's it's so great to uh, finally see the light at the end of the tunnel for us on this uh, COVID situation. Uh, and live shows are starting to happen first there in North America, but then we hope that 20, 20, uh, 2022, then we're gonna. A move forward to do a, a proper world tour and we can, we can find finally see this uh the, the holy ground album and with this amazing lineup that the dead days is put up again so thank you very much from the bottom of our hearts we really Thanks, appreciate guys. you for you, you being here Obrigado. Doug, thank you so much again thank you guys all the best and i'm sorry about last week i tried to get on and I couldn't no problem couldn't no problem no yeah problem. no problem at all we, we did we didn't know that they're gonna ask for a, a password and yeah and they, it didn't work but but that's fine it's late better late than ever yeah they 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 asked me for passwords for YouTube and the different stuff and it was I couldn't I still haven't had a chance to get online there so thank you guys for for figuring it out and uh Tomorrow, I'm going to New York. I will see you guys as soon as possible. And anything I can do in the future, let me know. And uh, we'll go from there. Okay. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you so much. Thanks, guys. All the best. Obrigado. All the best to you. Also. Obrigado. Bye.